Recently, shares of 3M Company took a dive after the company beat third-quarter profit expectations but missed on revenue. Further, the company lowered the earnings outlook, citing challenging macroeconomic conditions, including slowdowns in the U.S. and China. This was important because one of our subscribers recently took a position in 3M at about $151 per share prior to the earnings release and prior to the dive in the price per share. As such, I think this serves as a good example for why I use the system I teach. So, let's take a look. Recently, 3M slumped by 4.1% to $161.89 per share. This was enough to make it the biggest decliner among the Dow Industrial Average on that day. The $6.87 price decline shaved about 47 points off the Dow's price. Now, leading up to the results, 3M's stock had zoomed 12% in 11 days since closing at a 3.5 year low at $150.74 per share on October 8th. In a post-earnings conference call, Chief Executive Michael Roman stated that we continue to face softness in certain end markets, namely China, automotive, and electronics, which represent 30% of our company. The company, which owns brands as Post-it, Scotch, NextCare and Command said that it expects fourth quarter net earnings per share of $2.05 to $2.15 per share. This is well under consensus earnings estimates. 3M also lowered its 2019 adjusted earnings per share guidance range and its return on invested capital, both well below the consensus estimates. To end the conference call, the CEO stated that while the economic environment remains challenging, we executed well and built on the progress we made in the second quarter. Moving ahead, we'll continue to focus on driving operational improvements and investing for the future, which will position us for strong growth and premium returns as our markets recover. So here is where we'll learn our lesson when we take a look at the charts. So we're now looking at the 20-year monthly chart on 3M Company, and the symbol is MMM. For disclosure purposes, I do not hold any shares of 3M at this time. And from 2009 all the way through the current period, it's had a pretty decent upward trend, with the exception that it uh, actually got up above $250 a share. But since the last uh, year and a half, maybe up to two years, the stock has been consolidating all the way to where it is now at $166 and change. So, as I said, our subscriber bought at around $151 a share not all that long ago. But that was prior to the earnings release and then, of course, prior to the plunge in the stock following that earnings release. Now, if we look at the MAC here, you can see that the fast line is still uh, well below the slow line. So there's a pretty big difference. Personally, I wouldn't purchase a stock until that uh, difference in the fast line and the slow line closes. I don't like to be so early, so our subscriber was a bit early. Now, the other oscillators say that our subscriber was perhaps maybe on time. We'll see. Because the MAC histogram shows that the bottom happened here and for the last couple of months has been improving. The price rate of change also shows some improvement with that bottom here. Fast line did go above the slow line, came back down to this point here. It's still on its way down, but I doubt it's going to get all the way down here to that negative 75, which is pretty negative. But in the last several months, it has shown some progression. So we'll give them that too. Relative strength index. Is that a moderately weak 37.11 with the bottom at that point? Some minor improvement. Moving down into the stochastics, same sort of uh, bottoming process with the fast line just about to cross through the slow line here at under that 20, so it's in oversold territory. Now, the fast line did cross over here in early 2019, 
but it spiked up, but then headed on back down. So that was not the time to buy. You should be still watching at that point in time. And I would still be watching, but our subscriber didn't watch. Our subscriber jumped in at $151 a share once again in that area there. But the stochastics shows that things look good. Volume looks fine. And then the Williams as well. Certainly a bottoming here and that improvement. So the majority of the oscillators do show that it was a good purchase. But me, my trigger is the MAC, and the MAC's not quite there. So what happens between now and when the MAC, uh, the fast line does cross through the slow line, typically there is a lot of sideways trading. Now there's some volatility up and down, but I call that sideways trading. So again, setting the stage, that's where our subscriber bought at $151 a share. And from that point in time, the stock did increase in price. So our subscriber was quite happy about that, but then the earnings came and the earnings weren't necessarily all that good. But it's the reaction in the stock that is the lesson here. The reaction being that the stock did compress back in value, but not as low as where our subscriber purchased. And so that really is a lesson. So our subscriber may have been early, but given that the stock has been hammered for nearly two years, bad news doesn't take the stock down as much as it would have in other circumstances. So our subscriber is in a position now to hold, sell, or buy more. The position is well protected because much of that risk has been removed over that uh, year, year and a half or so. So let this be a learning lesson on risk. Now the next lesson is to watch the reaction when good news comes. And so for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.